everyone this is Chicho welcome to my channel and welcome to our second romance comic reading in this batch that we're doing and uh, in the previous reading what we did we read through young love number 31 right and uh, specifically we read through the art by Jack Kirby okay and it's the first story and it was called be my valentine so nice nice read fun read and we took a look at some of the history behind this comic book behind prize publications and how important they were in in the romance industry because they published the first basically romance comic book series right and uh, this book the young love came out in 1952 and we had to read through that and both of these comics we picked up in the previous comic book hall comic book hall number 24 thanks in large part to uh, one of the people that's been following our work here nicholas and he really loved the comic book stuff the comic book halls the comic book discussions the comic book readings and stuff like this so he sent some funds our way to pick up uh, some additional comics and these were two of the comics that we ended up picking up right so we ended up reading through this and what we're going to do now is read through life story and the reason i picked these was because obviously young love was done by jack kirby right so Jack Kirby you got to read a love story by Jack Kirby and uh, um, Simon and Kirby basically were the were the people behind this series right so it's a pretty historical important piece okay now young love came out in 1952 this one here is the one we're going to read now and this one came out in 1950 and I want to read through specifically one of the stories and the reason I want to read through that is because the artwork for that story in this book is done by Wally Wood, Wallace Wood, which is also another giant in the industry, specifically doing a lot of work for EC Comics and the Golden Age of Comics. And he was sort of a founders of Mad Magazine, right? And Wally Wood basically did a lot of work. Uh, aside from comic books as well he did a lot of advertising a lot of covers a lot of posters a lot of syndicated comic strips and cards and whatnot right and he's uh he's amazing wally wood uh, uh, is fantastic and doing the just looking the stuff up regarding the story and regard regarding wally wood i found out that uh, he didn't really like being called wally wood but everyone knows him as wally wood so i hope he grew to appreciate it uh, being called Wally Wood uh, and it is uh, that is the name that I've been referring to him throughout the previous comic books that we've been doing so maybe in this one we'll we'll, uh, we'll call him Wallace Wood right so this is the book that we're gonna read and one of the one sentence basically I, I found that it was interesting with this and um, basically it came from William Gaines, and he was the publisher for EC Comics, um, the founder, really, of EC Comics, I believe, anyway. And this is the quote that I found, I believe it was on Wiki, where he said, uh, quoting now, Wally may have been our most troubled artist. Um, I'm not suggesting any connection, but he may have been our most brilliant, right? And for me, the the art that made me fall in love with uh, Wallace Wood is art, artwork and really cherish his work and try to get uh, comics from him was the stuff that he did for sci-fi. Um, some of the stuff he did in uh, for EC Comics and their sci-fi, science fiction, fantasy books was absolutely brilliant. Really just mind-boggling. So as soon as I saw those many many moons ago uh, he became one of my favorite artists and i'm glad to have this because i don't think i have anything from wallace wood in regards to romance comics okay and again this book came out in uh, 1950 okay and in this comic book haul that we got and thank you nicholas for sending the funds so we could get these comics and do readings of them and talk about the comic books and do a comic book haul I ended up picking this comic for a steal. Okay. 
we got this comic book for one dollar Canadian 75 cents US okay a Wallace Wood golden age romance comic from the 1950s published by Fawcett comics okay uh, for 75 cents US and this is issue number 13 okay so let's crack this open and we'll flip through the book and have a read through uh, Wallace Woods uh, story and uh, we might have a read through one of the other stories as well we'll take a look at this okay let me put the paper uh, bag on this side and by the way this was when I bought this this was graded at very good minus it was the same grade that we got for the previous um, issue the young romance number 31 by uh, Jack Kirby uh, but I would uh, I would almost consider the Jack Kirby one as a very good and I would consider this one as a very good minus because the there's a little bit of well not a little bit fair bit of cuts here right so the other one um, the young love was the cover was in a little bit better shape but it didn't have to this one doesn't have the chipping which the other one did so this was a this was a, a graded at very good minus okay so let's have a flip through this first and then we'll decide what we're going to read and there is uh, basically um, one two three uh, four main stories in this book okay and this one let's check it out it's got some credits here cool usually the golden age books didn't have too many credits hmm, what's this check this out draw me try for one thousand two hundred dollar in prizes oh in prizes so they don't give you cash let's check it out five prizes five prizes in this april contest five com five complete 240 dollar art courses including drawing outfits here's your big chance if you want to become a commercial artist designer or illustrator an easy to try way to win free art training find out if you have talent too okay so they're going to offer uh, drawing courses to people right whether you win or not our instructors send you their comments on your work if your drawing shows promise trained illustrators and artists now making big money find out and an artist now making big money okay find out now if you have uh, profitable art talent you have nothing to lose everything to gain start your drawing drawing now mail it today cool and they got little instructions here how to do it and they're not asking for money so that's cool right so they're genuinely looking for artists this one is uh, another spring. Yeah, this is a this is supposed to be a fourteen page sto fourteen page uh, story. So let's flip through this, and then we'll read the fine print, and we'll give a little bit of info on this. Let's check this out for now, though, uh, because in what we found out in the previous uh, reading that we did for young love in the fine print it stated that all of these were true stories right that people had sent in so should we read this before we flip through it just to see if they're true stories let's read the fine print okay <laughs> we'll do this in different order okay life story april 1950 volume 3 number 13 is published monthly by fawcett publications incorporated Fawcett Place, Greenwich, Connecticut, entered as second class mail January 13, 1949, at the post office, Greenwich, Connecticut, under the Act of, uh, Act of March 1879. Additional entry at Buffalo, New York, copyright 1950 by Fawcett Publications Incorporated trademark or faucet publications incorporated editorial and advertising offices 
16 West 44th Street, New York, 18 New York, send remittance and letters concerning uh, subscriptions, charge of address incorporated to circulation debut. Fawcett Publications, Connecticut, subscription rate, 12 issues for $1.20 in U.S. Possessions in U.S. Positions in Canada, foreign, $1.20 in international money order, U.S. funds printed in USA. So this doesn't say if they're true stories or not, right? But a lot of these Golden Age romance comics, they were uh, sort of stories that people had sent in, right? And nothing on the cover it says that either. Big 52 page pages, right? Another spring, that's one of the stories, bitter uh, bittersweet memories no one but you dead end for love these are the four stories that are in this issue okay now we don't know who the artist was for the first one another spring bittersweet memories i couldn't find anything on it either okay no one but you is by wallace wood okay and dead end for love is by bob powell and just to give you a little bit of history on uh, Wallace Wood, in one of the comic book databases, he's credited by uh, producing 702 issues, comic book issues, okay? And Bob Powell is credited by publishing 457 issues, working on 457 issues. And the odds are we'll probably read the Bob Powell story as well. Let's look at this. Executive ed editor Will Lieberson, art editor Al uh, Letter, editor Roy Alp, associate, I guess, editor Helen uh, Houghton. Okay. Nice artwork. Another spring. Let's just read this first panel, the intro panel to this. An April shower, another spring, but what does it mean to me? Only the endless uh, mon monotony of farm chores, the same careworn faces in the same small town. Okay. Let's read this. U.S. Mail. Romance is an elusive. Romance is as is as elusive as a breath of air, the ripple in a brook, or the song of a morning bird. It is the soul of sweetness, and it thrives on the loving freedom of a generous heart, but in her anxiety to have and to hold. Hold. Nan's possessiveness stifled love's impulse and lost her heart's desire. Heavy, eh? Heavy. Nice artwork. Oh, she sees a car crash. Look at the car going down. Heavy rains coming in. Nice. I love the story time panels, right? The little bubbles. Beautiful hearts, roses. She finds them. And again, lots of story being told here, right? Lots of text, close up of faces, discussion. And passionate kisses. Check it out. Passionate kisses. Nice. She's caring for him. Oh, look at this. Beautiful. I was up the next morning and the morning that followed at the first hint of dawn 
a new excitement and restlessness restlessness prompted me to activities I had avoided for some time. I couldn't wait to see Dan, be reassured that his presence was more than a wishful dream. been hoping no praying would be the word to describe my longing for Danny's embrace he had to feel the way I did and that kiss that moment of blissful enchantment confessed that he did then as time winged its endless unheeding way my vision of happiness became just another way of saying Danny well he must be saying he needs to go the door slams please mother I don't wish to discuss it you love the boy boy that's fine my dear but if you should decide to leave please mother I don't wish to discuss it Bam! slams the door let's see what Danny says here Hey, beautiful, if I'm to uh, be condemned to the cell, how about coming upstairs and lighting my, uh, lightening my sentence? You know, I am allowed visitors. <laughs> I'm coming, Danny, she says. I wish I could find a way to make it a life sentence. Ooh. She wants him to stay. Look at this embrace. Beautiful. Definitely a book made for more mature readers. Beautiful silhouettes. Let's read this as well. Let's read these two guys. A thousand unnamed fears clutched my heart. The bed was neatly made and the room was tidied as if by the hands of a departing guest. Then I noticed something propped up on the dresser. A letter. And with my name on it. Oh, she spills the tray. With tremendous... Uh, Trem tremulous hands I unfolded the note and tried to still my trembling I read in the many in the many weeks I've stayed here Nam, Nan I've come to love you very dearly I had even gone so far as to plan a life together for us but I know now that I would only be a burden to you and you folks I have no right to chain you to an invalid to an invalid and so I am leaving as ever Danny oh no but he looked like he was okay he was walking around so his injuries must have been pretty serious right probably explained in the in the text mother oh no danny no no she says nan what is it mother danny's gone he's left for good but he couldn't have left more than a short while ago i heard him rummaging around in his room she ran outside oh let's check out what this guy's saying i must stop danny i must she says I met Danny down the road a piece 
I was coming to look in on your dad's uh, rheumatism the boy was all upset he had some notion about his being sick uh, but I straightened him out on it seems to kind of freeze up when I gave him my word of honor he was all rise nice that's the doctor oh and then he comes back sweet we like happy love stories right. then it was out Danny knew the truth he would know my lies and my designs to keep him from going oh she must have been lying to him telling him that it was uh, his injuries were much worse oh trickster trickster it almost backfired on her eh? I had to see him to explain how much I loved him to plead with him to stay I whirled away from the doctor and headed down the road until I saw his dear familiar figure Danny you can't go away what have you come to tell me now that I'll never make it that I'll collapse on the road do you want me to go back to the cell block of a room ah so she was lying she was lying oh he's angry look at that and that's how he left me standing in the road oh okay let's read his comments we gotta read this this is spoilers by the way apologies pretend pretense says and outright lies is that what my admitted love entitled me to why weren't you honest with me i wanted to marry you more than anything else in the world but there can be no love where there is no faith so i'm leaving man that's like the advice we had in the previous comic we read right where honesty um, advice from the I guess psychologist whoever it was right and that's how he left me standing in the road no denial on my lips no defense in my heart I stumbled home in an agony of torment mother and dad a torment mother and dad were there to receive me as always mother dad you were so right why oh why didn't i listen to you sob she goes away cries let's read the last three we gotta do we gotta do the months and seasons revolved and i learned to live again with with renewed faith though the hurt of danny's absence was ever fresh in my unforgetting heart then once again it was spring another spring and nostal nostalgically i drifted back to the scene of the accident where i met danny when i returned home later danny so he's come back hello nan I remembered it was the first day of spring you brought me here I have a swell job now and I wanted to repay you all show you my gratitude your your folks have told me a lot about you oh so she was there talking to the parents I've missed you Nan, and I had hope and I had hoped oh why beat about the bush I love you sob oh my darling she says well mother everything is going to be just fine from now on that's the father talking to the mom right that's a good love story partial heartbreak that's for sure take a look at this i saw when i was looking up this thing i saw this and i was surprised to see it but an exclusive interview with gene kelly take a look and that's his picture right there right awesome and gene kelly if uh, for those of you that don't know he was one of the uh great actors from i guess the golden age right 19 i don't know if he came it was around 1940s but he must have been in the 1940s because this came out in 1950 right 
So I don't know if it was around 1930s, but it was around 1940s, 50s, 60s as well, I believe. And I've seen a few movies with Gene Kelly, and he's fantastic. And again, this has come up a couple of times. Now, if you've never seen black and white movies, the golden age movies from that period, for sure take the time to watch some of those movies from the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. Okay, there, there are some brilliant stories, brilliant films being told. And this is supposed to be a two-page interview. Let's read some of this. Let's read some of this. Okay. Exclusive interview with Gene Kelly must be done. Question. In your opinion, who is the most beautiful girl in Hollywood? Answer from Gene Kelly. The most beautiful girl in the whole world is Esther Williams. Wow, wow, wow. And that in, uh, incorporates physiognomy, incorporates physiognomy, figure, expression, and charm. These are words. Uh, physe in, incorporates physiognomy. I don't know. These are words that are lost to me. Esther looks wholesome and dewy and in my opinion, represents the typical American beauty. That's cool. Of what personal habit are you trying to break yourself? Answer, I'm trying to make myself go to bed earlier at night, but it looks like a hopeless task. Question, how do you feel when doing love scenes? Answer, they aren't so different from any other deeply emotional scene you go through. There is no personal feeling involved at all. The only thing that bothers me is worrying about smearing the girl's makeup. Cool. Are you an icebox raider? I have no idea what that means. Answer. But the champions of the world. But the champion of the world. I make Dagwood Lake look like, a, like an amateur say i wonder if it could could be those pickled cheese liver worst peanut butter sandwiches that keep me fa from falling asleep at night icebox raider that probably means uh, going to the fridge at night and having uh, midnight munchies or middle of the night munchies that's what it is cool are you a, are you a born dancer and gene kelly was an amazing dancer amazing dancer okay i wish i were wow he wasn't i wish i were then i wouldn't have cost my parents so much money for dancing lessons when i was a youngster i guess i was born with a certain talent for it because i started dancing when i was so young i don't even remember but i worked a good number of years to become a dancer and i do mean worked cool this is exactly what richard feynman uh, has said in interviews and in writings and Richard Feynman is a uh, one of the best known physicists from the United States right where he said he's never met a genius or savant or anything talent comes with hard work and Gene Kelly looks like he did a lot of hard work to dance right what is your favorite type of social dancing you'll be disappointed answer You'll be disappointed but but here it is the good old-fashioned waltz wow it's not spectacular and it doesn't require great ability like the rumba or samba for instance but i think it's the most lyrical of all popular dancing steps also do you wish you were <laughs> you were handsomer answer I'll never keep Charles Boyer awake and I don't care. No one would ever have suggested me for suggested me for Reed Butler. I have a Joe Average pan and that's the kind of guy I like to play on the screen. Do you like uh, screwy hats on women? No. Does <laughs> any man? <laughs> What was your first professional appearance? Answer from Gene Kelly. 
playing a nightclub engagement in Pittsburgh when I was when I went to college there I had to earn some money to see me through school after I'd taken turns at concert mixing and carpentry the bright idea flashed through my head that I might as well put to practical use all the dancing lessons I had I'd had how did you propose to your wife this is awesome answer I got a contract to make pictures in Hollywood and I realized I didn't want to go without Betsy so I called her from Philadelphia where I was staging a show she was then in New York and popped the $64 question of course don't think she wasn't expecting me to do it these women are always ahead of, <laughs> ahead of a guy <laughs> what is the unkindest remark you have heard about yourself answer a columnist once lied about me over the radio and said I had left my wife and child wow, wow, wow. I wonder if Gene Kelly uh, stayed there with his wife with what's her name Betsy do you talk to yourself when you're alone answer constantly and I like almost everything everyone and like almost everyone else I always think of some snappy or brilliant remark which I wish I'd said but didn't very cool I like Gene Kelly even more now really let's keep on reading this what is what is the chief bone of contention at home okay. the only one I can think of is that I never eat vegetables and Betsy is always trying to make me eat them and question in what way do you give into Betsy answer I eat them <laughs> what performance of yours on the screen gave you the greatest thrill oh man I can't wait answer doing the shadow dance with myself in cover cover girl oh my god no one will ever know how difficult it was every technician on the set said it couldn't be done and I sweated plenty to prove they were wrong I had to go to the head of the studio to get permission to do that bit in the dance where I threw a garbage can through a large pane of window glass because he thought it was too dangerous to attempt I had to stand only about 10 feet from the glass and he was afraid the shattering glass would hurt me I wanted very much to do that dance just as I had planned it and the greatest thrill of my life was completing it successfully I am going to go find download this music shadow dance or get it from the library or rent it from somewhere and watch it I remember the scene when I was many moons ago when I was a kid watching this right I'm not this old but there was a period where I was really into black and white movies and a lot of dance movies and stuff there's a scene I can't remember if it was Gene Kelly or who it is that does the dancing in the rain uh, and stuff and I remember this one as well and I'm gonna try to track this down okay for sure for sure what is your greatest uh, extravagance buying everything in town at Christmas without figuring out where I have any particular person in mind to whom I can give it oops let me show you guys this right this one we just read that one let's read the next one whom would you most like to resemble answer at the age of 10 I wanted to look like my hero Douglas Fairbanks awesome Douglas Fairbanks Fairbanks senior but I'm afraid the die is cast and it's too late for me to look like anyone but myself who was your very first love a mongrel dog that followed me home and stayed until he died ah oh, that is awesome that is awesome what don't you like about yourself on the screen 
I could write a book on the subject. I literally turn green when I see myself do certain things. For example, I like to get rid of my New York swag. I guess that's the accent, maybe? I know what swag is. I don't know what twag is. What is your favorite food? Steak, first of all. And I've got a sweet tooth that's never satisfied. I can eat candy bars till dawn. I can relate to that. I can relate to that. What is your idea of a good time? Going away to a mountain retreat, having some people and books around, and plenty of time to loaf. Awesome, awesome. What, in general, is your philosophy of life? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That rule covers a multitude of actions. And remember, this is, this is the golden rule, right? We've talked about this when we did the sort of a review or talking about skin in the game by Nassim Taleb, right? So he's quoting the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. For me, I like the silver rule better. I think it's more powerful what we talked about. And the silver rule is don't do unto others what you do not want done unto you, right? That way you're remaining passive. When you do things to others that you want done unto you, you're being intrusive to a certain degree, right? What do you wish you didn't have to do? Answer, shave. I think it would be heaven to go without shaving for weeks. Awesome, Gene Kelly. You could have done it now. Back then, I guess beards were not in, and they weren't actually. There's a movie out there where, I forget who the actor is. He's, he's a comedian actor, but he played some serious roles as well. And he worked in a bank, I believe. Um, and on his vacation he grew a beard i forget what the movie's called wow if you guys know please post the comment he grew a beard on vacation and uh, he came back and he wouldn't shave it off and everyone was looking at him all wacko and there was a huge controversy okay what is your favorite costume around the house answer t-shirt slacks and uh moccasins the the nice part about not being a great lover type is that one doesn't have to live up to a reputation i can knock about in old clothes without anyone being disillusioned awesome do you like to play parlor games i should say i do games are lots more fun for adults than for children indications or charades is my indications i don't know that game or charades is my favorite what was your most embarrassing moment answer in a high school version of midsummer's night's dream as a shakespeare play right i played bottom and while doing a little dance i heard a chuckle go through the audience my pants had fallen down oh no what pet name do you and your wife call each other genie and sweeney <laughs> nice gene kelly genie and betsy sweeney the first because it's a uh, affectionate form of gene i call her sweeney for no other reason than that it rhymes cool what compliment uh, meant most to you answer when fred astaire told me i was a great dancer wow 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 and fred astaire is one of the other uh, amazing actors from that period and considered to be basically by almost everyone that i know of the greatest dancer in film right with gene kelly a close second okay what is your personal recipe uh for making friends and influencing people okay answer i don't know I never thought about it maybe that's it i just like people and show it awesome this was amazing interview with gene 
Kelly, right? Interview with Gene Kelly, an exclusive interview with Gene Kelly from a 1950 romance comics called Life Story, issue number 13, okay? That also contains art by Wallace Allen Wood. Wally Wood, one of the greatest comic book artists of all times in the same comic book from the golden age as one of the greatest Hollywood movie dancers of all time. That is bliss. Okay. Fantastic. And what we're going to do is personally doing the shadow dance with myself in Cover Girl. That's the movie we're going to look for, or I'm going to look for, okay, to see what the shadow dance look like, or maybe even just look it up online, right? I'm pretty sure it's got to be up there. It's got to be up there. Sweet, sweet, sweet. What is this one? Bittersweet Memory. And this one, I don't know who the artist is for this one either, okay? Bittersweet Memory. Let's read the first couple of things and look at this panel. Awesome. Everybody is making a quick killing, darling. Everybody but you. And that's because you're so conservative. You move so slow, she says. Right. It's just that I want to make sure I know what move I want before making it. My building project for those new low-priced homes is coming along swell as soon as soon as i get the money we're off right oh she doesn't look happy check it out <laughs> she does not look happy but he made his money she says crazy look at this darling I got a feeling this guy is being played. Maybe, maybe. We see, we see. Nice artwork again. Hopefully he's not being played. Right. Let's look at the full pages. Flip through this. This is supposed to be uh, an 11 page story. Okay. Well, look at this. So the staple is loose on the top one, right? So we're gonna be a little bit careful with this one. Cool. Nice panel work. No, oh, no, somebody's gone into bankruptcy. I wonder if it's his company. But the real but but the real estate goes into bankruptcy. Chicago bank loan negotiates negotiated by Bruce Butler recalled. Grandson of founder vows to repay customers for homes that were never built. Look at this. Let's see what she's been doing. I think she's been going out looking for loans. And so it went, week after week, month after month, town after town. Nope, 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 nope. Don't know him. Oh, maybe he's looking for someone. Ah, oh, take a look at this. Nice. If I could only shake this cold cough, I should eat something cough. But my money is getting low, too low. I must find him, I must. Oh, I think she's going after him, trying to find him. Maybe.
Oh, what's going on? Oh, check this out. So this guy basically was the scammer. Help, help me, somebody. He's a thief. Police, police. Let go, you crazy fool, he says. Oh, and it looks like the police is after them, right? Let's read this. I paused, trying desperately to gather strength to continue. And then I saw the face I had carried in my heart through all those desperate days. Bruce, oh Bruce, I catch her. Oh, she was fainting, right? Take a look. And there's a kiss. I, I don't deserve you. Don't try to talk, Sandra. I know what you went through to clear me. Just get well, darling. You're the most precious thing in my life, and I need, need you back again, he says. Right. Take a look. Awesome. Dead End for Love. And this is the story by Wallace Woods. Nice. And this is the one we're going to read. So we're not going to read the first panel right now. Okay. We'll flip through this. Cool. Ah, look at the little lovebirds too, eh? Looking forward to reading this. Beautiful kiss. Hopefully we won't get any spoilers on this. And this is a nine page story. Okay. We'll flip through it fast. That way we're not gonna get any spoilers of what's going on. Okay. Now check out this one. Romance Oddities. Beautiful page. Beautiful. Right? Romance Oddities. This is a one-pager, I believe. Yeah, it is. This is just a one-pager. Should we read it? Let's read this too. Romance Oddities. That's how we read through this too. So the odds are we're just going to read the uh, Wallace Wood comic. Wally Wood one. But let's take a look at this. I don't know who did this one. This one-pager, right? Romance Oddities. Wedding processions in rural Korea are headed by two male relatives of the bride and groom who have a yellow flag to dispel evil spirits, thus ensuring a happy marriage. Hopefully some Korean people that are seeing this. I'm not sure if that's true or not. The wedding ring is placed on the third finger of the left hand because it was originally believed that that finger was connected by an artery with the heart. That's cool. Right. Any biologists out there? Is this true? The word honeymoon was derived from the fact that for one month, the newly wedded couple drank a special honey drink that was supposed to ensure happiness really i'll do that let's make some honey liqueur <laughs> right <laughs> i don't think we need to be married to go go through a honeymoon to have it that sounds delicious Take a look at this one according to old tradition if a maiden when hearing the cuckoo the first time in spring asks aloud cuckoo cuckoo tell me true tell me true when tell me true when shall i be married she may count the years to her wedding day by the number of times the bird cries cuckoo hmm. i wonder if this also works for men 
if you want to be married, that is. Right. In Europe, during olden day, days, maidens spent much of their time spinning linen for their home chest. Though many never married, they kept on spinning and hoping. Thus arose the term spinster. Wow. Interesting. little bits of fact or fiction we don't know this one I've heard before that the artery is connected to the heart but I've never checked into it I like this one honey drink for a month sounds good this story no one but you is by Bob Powell okay on um, Bob Powell is also was one of the early greats in the comic book industry right he has about 457 for one of the databases i checked 457 issues to his credit okay uh he was active in the 1930s and 40s okay he also worked on um sheena queen of the jungle and mr mystic okay he also got credit uh, later on sort of belated credit and this is stuff I've picked up from wiki for Black Hawk right uh, one of the main things that he had worked on was on the bubblegum trading cards Mars attacks so those classic uh, collector trading cards of Mars attacks uh, that are very much collectible is Bob Powell that did the artwork for them okay i don't have that set i have the set that was released mars attacks in the 19 i guess early 1990s including the mars attacks uh, uh comic book series right the mars attacks remake was fantastic with uh, tom jones in it right? it was so good so good let's read this panel okay Oh, we'll have more, but not today. Little Andy and his friends need sleep now. The lady says, I guess she's a teacher, right? Ha ha ha, we want more. More, Helen. The kids are yelling. Right. Helen gloried in her work as a puppeteer. By manipulating the strings, she brought tears or laughter to her make-believe world. But when Helen tried to juggle human emotions she found herself in enmeshed in life's own strings strings that taught her that the tender tenderest emotion of all love is not for human hands to toy with a lot of these love stories start off serious eh very serious So she's in a classroom and she does the puppet shows again. Right. Cool. Cool. Give it the whole page look on this. Let's flip through this. Come on, dear. I guess that's her love interest. Right. Nice page. Nice panel pretty oh fabulous dress look at that beautiful and a beautiful embrace and kiss very nice let's see this his words let's read these guys right his words were suddenly broken off and Hank swept me into his his arms I had longed for this ecstatic moment and now his kiss a kiss that told me I was his his from this day on I love you Helen I felt it ever since I first met you will you marry me I love you too oh darling so very much yes I want to marry you with all my heart she said
the story is not ending. Look at that. Beautiful poses, right? Nicely done. Nicely done. Saves a kid. Look at that. Oh no. Dickie, look out. She yells. Right. Bo grabs her. Or grabs him. Right. Screech. Look at that. What happened? Why did Dickie run out wildly into the street? It's it's not the first time he's done it. I just can't control him any longer, she says. You were right, Helen. He does need more supervision. Will you come over tonight? We'll speak to him about the boarding school. All right, darling, she says. Oh. I wonder if Dickie's her kid. Take a look at this. That very moment, that very night, I determined Dickie wouldn't stand in the way of my immediate marriage. Getting him off to boarding school was the solution, and I began to act the next day. Oh my. I think that's her kid. Maybe we save it for another day, right? Oh, look at this. What's this? Let's read the tier one. A few hours later, I arrived at Hank's apartment to watch a pathetic scene as Dickie was told about boarding school. But I definitely hardened my heart as I thought of my own happiness. Oh, it's probably his kid then. I'll be, it'll be best for Dickie and us. I'll come and visit you, Dickie. Helen will too. You'll like it in boarding school. There's a lot of boys your own age, and you, you'll have, you'll have teams. And no, no, I won't go. Sob, sob. I don't want to go away from you, Hank. I don't want to sob. Come on, fellow. You're a big boy now. Once you get there, you'll love it. Scoot into the bathroom and wash your face, he says. Poor kid. Oh no, what's going on here? Oh, he ran out. He escaped, jumped out the window. And they go out looking for him, right? And someone finds him. And they bring him back. Oh no. I guess he told her it's boarding school. We know now what's troubling the youngster and can take corrective measures. You made some amends at least. I'll get I'll get right to the hospital. Hurry, doctor, hurry. She's still a puppeteer, doing her thing. Right. Helen, did you hear the news? Our next stop is Elville, your old hometown. Elville? No, she says. I guess she went away. Oh no, it looks like they were breaking up here. No, no. Right. Ah, she packed her suitcase. Hit the road. And 
then they come back and I guess they meet up again and she does the puppeteering right she's crying in the background Let's read the last two panels on this. Okay. They're coming. I I don't have to run anymore, ever. Sob, sob. Oh, darling, I... Don't say it, dear. I know. The doctor told me of your courage, how you went to him to help Dickie. We'll start all over again. Kiss me too, Helen, please. And she was telling the story here, right? Let's go back and read the pan panel where she's telling the doctor what was going on. Let's see. Let's see what the private conversation is, if it has it in this panel. The next morning, I went to the doctor's office and confessed, hating myself as I did so. That's why he's acting. That's why he he's acting as he is. I thought if I got him off to boarding school, we we could get married. He wouldn't go, so I did the things I've told you. I'm so ashamed. Oh my, she must have done a few things to get him, Dickie, to run into the street and stuff. Not very good. And well, you might be. The boy thinks he's not wanted now. You poisoned your fiance's mind with lies to get that child out of your selfish ruthless way oh my oh my that's not nice at all that's not nice at all right she was manipulating a little child wow and it backfired on her right but all's well as that ends well, right? <laughs> oh, there's a chunk missing here. The comic, right? The curtain is drawn aside on the intimate drama of real life romances in these picture love story magazines that thrill and captivate. Exciting romances, right? Nice. Romantic Western. And we have some of these, I think sweetheart diary very nice on sales on newsstands across the nation cool from the pages of life of life itself true confessions oh this one uh, i believe these ones are very sought after the stories in true confessions would hold you as you as no other stories you have ever read true confession stories are about real people written by people who lived the experience they write about thrill to true true stories of teenage love of courtship of marriage stories from the pages of life itself get your copy of true confessions today 15 cents at all newsstands so this was 50 cents true confessions more expensive than these ones that were 10 cents right very cool very cool let's go read the wally wood wallace allen wood story of dead end for love right let's go through it where are we dead end for love dead end for love To refer to him as Wally Wood, right? Bittersweet memories. The story we're looking for is the one after this. Okay. This looked cool as well, flipping through it. Lots of reading here, eh? Lots of reading. Dead end for love. Here we go. Here we go okay from life story from a 52 page special edition i guess or 52 page comic 
Life story number 13 from 1950. Fawcett Publications, Fawcett Comics. Let's have a read. Amy was indifferent to the crime breeding conditions of her neighbor, neighborhood, indifferent even though they threatened to engulf her brother, Jackie. Then Stan Lucas tried to change her warped conception but love can't live with callous disinterest. Wow. Look at the face on those. The, I guess this is Amy and her brother, right? Jackie. So Amy and Jackie, right? And that's one of these guys. I'm assuming that one's Stan Lucas. Jackie saw a gang of young hoodlums beat that boy almost to death on your block last night, Miss Broder. I want him to give me the names, asked the judge. Why should he? He's not involved, and there's no reason to endanger his own safety in the neighborhood by telling you who he is. Telling you who is. Since my, since my mother died two years ago and dad went into the maritime, marine, maritime service, Jackie had been my responsibility. We lived in a tough section and to hold his own in it, I had, to, I had taught him to mind his own business now. Okay. That's Amy's word. I'll have to hold Jackie in the custody of this court until he does speak, the judge says. Oh, no, she replies. May I have a word with you alone, judge? And I'll take a look. The brother talking to the sister. That guy Stan Lucas says, one of those do-gooders, social workers down at the center. I wonder what kind of trouble he's trying to stir up well whatever it is just you sit tight jackie we'll get a lawyer and fight if we have to she says right i watched the judge and stan lucas anxiety as as they came back and then bracing myself for the worst. Mr. Lucas, the athletic director of the Dick Street Youth Center, has asked me to parole Jackie in his custody. I'm granting his request. You can thank him, young man, for saving you from reform school. Oh, she says. It isn't as bad as all that. I'm really a nice guy when you get to know me. How about giving me a chance to prove it, he says. The teasing undertone in his voice made me really look at him for the first time. And suddenly, I decided there was something about his clear-cut, smiling face that I liked. She's got a smile on her face now. All right, Miss Lucas, Mr. Lucas. If you can stand us, I guess we can stand you. That's better. And now that I've that we've broken the ice, let's use first names. I'm Stan, he says. And I'm Amy, Amy Broder. Glad to know you, Stan. How about lunch? I'll bet Jackie here could do justice to a steak. Sure, but look, mister, don't try soft soaping me into squealing on those kids the judge was talking about because it won't work see that won't be uh, squealing Jackie you'd just be living up to your responsibilities as a free citizen of a free country someday you realize that meanwhile 
Let's forget the whole thing, he says. Okay. No sermons, no missionary work from you to two inhabitant, inhabitants of the Dick Street jungle, she asks. No sermon, just good food and a pleasant half hour with a very pretty girl and her brother. Here's my car, she, he says. Dick Street Youth Center is written here, right? The food was good and the pleasant half hour turned into two full hours made interesting by Stan's talk of his work. Even Jackie hung on every word. You mean you knew Mad Dog Toller? Gee, he says, the brother, right? We grew up on the same slum street. Toller took the easy way out with a gun and died in the electric chair. I worked my way through college, went into social work and wore and swore to save as many kids as possible from his fate, he says. As I listened to the fiery intensity of his voice, I felt something stir within me. It was like a knife blade trying to cut its way through my conscience. I rose abruptly, sweeping aside the thought. You promised not to preach, she says. So I did. I'm sorry, but it was really your fault getting me started on that subject. I never do know when to stop. Uh, when to stop. Come on, I'll take you home, he says. Oh, he's got a little frown, anger face on his face. Right. Soon. Look at those boys. There are thousands of them like that. Kid vandalizes one day. Kid vandals one day. Gangsters the next. It scares me, he says. They're just naturally not good. Look at Jackie. He lives in the same neighborhood, yet he never steals. You can stop. You can drop us here. Stan, she says. They're in the car driving by, right? As Stan opened the door, I began to climb out, then paused a moment to look up into his face. One, our eyes met, and we both knew he had a question to ask me, and that my answer would be yes. It was nice having lunch with you and Jackie. I'd like to do it. Uh, sometime again soon Sunday I'd love to stand but Jackie will be at our grandparents for the day we'll have to go alone oh until Sunday Amy I don't think he's uh, sad about that until Sunday Amy he is handsome she's thinking and very nice somehow I'd never figured him for a social worker brothers looking aside right Stan called for me Sunday morning we drove uptown to a little restaurant where we lunched on a terrace overlooking the Hudson River funny isn't it I've lived in New York all my life yet never saw the river from these bluffs it's so blue and beautiful Stan you should see it just after sunset Amy it's deep, deep lavender, then, like your eyes. It sparkles like they do clear and warm. I'll bet you didn't learn that little speech in college, she says. It's not a speech, Amy. Speeches come merely from the lips, but that was from my, that was my heart talking. We followed the road above the river, stopping now and then to watch the boats below us. Late afternoon, 
found us crossing the bare mountain ridge. It's like a heart. Let's stop in the park, Stan. I've never seen it. Oh, good idea. We won't have much time to explore before dark, but we can go through the zoo. It's fascinating, he says. Cute little devils, aren't they? They're adorable. Oh, Stan, look behind us. Lovebirds, she says. How sweet. Look how they snuggle, Stan. Do you suppose they can feel the emotions of love as humans do? Of course, Amy. Love is a universal feeling. Say, we'll have to get started back now. It's getting late. We ate at a park cafeteria, then turned homeward. The ride seemed short, much too short. And as we stopped in front of my house, it was a wonderful day stand. It's opened my eyes to something wonderful. So it's opened my eyes to some wonderful places in the city I've never seen. I'd like to open your eyes even more, Amy. Enough to make you really see this street and what it's doing to the kids like your brother and even you. If you could only see that, he says. I suppose I trot right down to your youth center. Well, this street does to people only what they let it do. Jackie and I are all right, and we don't need your numby pumby speeches. Amy, come on. He pulled me to him, his face harsh, his eyes hot points of anger, kissing me. His love dissolved the barrier. I erected against it. Is this Nambi Pambi? Is it? Stan, oh darling, she says. Sigh, isn't this better than talking about other people's troubles? You still don't see, do you, Amy? Well, someday you will, but I won't say anything more except good night, darling. I've waved Stan goodnight with mixed emotion, loving him for the loving him for the kiss, kiss, but annoyed at his instant social work talk turning towards my door. I saw the usual gang of boys hanging around the stationery store, only this time. Can that be Jackie? I can't believe it, but it is. Jackie, what are you doing with these boys? You know they're troublemakers. Oh, sis, you've got them all wrong. They've got a club, the Clovers, they call it. They asked me to join. There's nothing wrong with that, he says. He looks like the kid that was stealing from a previous page, right? If we flip back, where is that guy? This guy's got blonde hair, this kid. This kid's got the red hair, so it's a different kid. Maybe, maybe. Right. Well, I, I guess not, but you better come up to bed now. It's late. Sure, sis. Good night, fellas. See you tomorrow. I forgot about Jackie's new friends as thoughts of Stan drove all else from my mind. During the next weeks, we saw a lot of each other, then one night. From this height, the city doesn't look like New York, but like some fairyland. It could be a fairyland for us, Amy. Look at me, darling, I love you, he says. And passionate kiss again. Love you with my whole heart, he says. 
And I love you, Stan. I've loved you always. And so the words I'd waited, waited for Stan to speak were spoken. But something happened to threaten my happiness. Stan had asked me to send Jackie down to the center and I'd promised, however, several days later. Darling, haven't, I haven't seen Jackie at the gym yet. I thought you'd asked him to come. He is my responsibility, you know, he says. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Stan. It completely slipped my mind. I'll speak to him tomorrow. I wish you would you would I notice I'm hanging around with some of the boys from the clover gang yesterday they're not for him they're not for him I don't see anything wrong with them besides I said I'd speak to him she's getting a little bit angry a tense look came into Stan's face and I knew I'd spoken too sharply he was hurt good night sweet will I see you tomorrow Yes, darling, tomorrow and all tomorrows, he says. I'd avoided an unpleasant situation with Stan, but my heart re rebelled at the thought of sending Jackie to the center again against his wishes. That night, as I stood over his sleeping form, he's sleeping like an angel. How ridiculous to think he could get into serious trouble. Stan's just a pessimist he's dealt with too many delinquents she says or she thinks right. for Stan's sake though I should go down to the center myself and see just what he does I know I'll go tomorrow and surprise him I appear at the center the next morning and was directed to the gym Stan was referring refereeing a basketball game and for a moment I just stood there and watched watched then hi there I see they've got you working Amy wow this is a surprise did you decide to bring Jackie instead of sending him he asks I er, didn't get a chance to ask Jackie yet, Stan, but I'm here. Won't I do? Won't I do instead? I should be angry with you, Amy, but I can't be. Yes, you'll do wonderfully. Come along, I'll show you around. He says. The center was a pleasant surprise as Stan showed me around. A faint understanding of what the center was trying to accomplish penetrated my mind. And this is the arts and crafts room, Amy. Here, children are given the opportunity to display their creative abilities. Scholar, scholarships to the more talented help them on the way to a profession. What a wonderful idea, she says. I'm glad to hear you say that Amy I know now you'll you'll encourage Jackie to join us look why not send him down tonight we're showing a travel film I know he'll be interested in I will Stan I really will good but now I've got to finish refereeing that game tomorrow darling tomorrow sweet she says I was greatly impressed by the activities at the center and that evening over dinner over the dinner table I told Jackie about them and tonight they have this film about African exploration you'd enjoy that Jackie and I promised Stan you'd be there oh not tonight sis I've got a heavy date with the gang I'll go tomorrow he says well all right Jackie 
But don't get into trouble, she says. Trouble? You don't know, though. The clover says we can handle anything. Well, I've got to go. A sense of disquietude clung to me all evening. Then, about nine, my phone rang. It was Stan. Jackie didn't show up, Amy. What's the matter? Nothing, Stan. He had a date with the Clovers, and I didn't have the heart to say no. But you have the heart to refuse me when you know how important it is for me to get him away from that gang. Amy, you're impossible. Goodbye. He's angry. But, Stan, I... I was angry at Stan and resolved to tell him tell him so the next day. I retired early and fell asleep immediately after midnight. The doorbells rang, frantically answering it. I found Miss Amy Broder? Yes, what? You better come with us, Miss Broder. Your kid brother's been hurt in an automobile accident. He's at Mercy Hospital with a slight concussion and a couple of broken ribs. During the wild ride to the hospital, I sat in the car as one, one dead, stunning, stunned by the tragedy. But it was only when I opened the door to Jackie's room that I realized its full uh, enormity. Stan, what happened to Jackie? You should know, since you're responsible for it. Jackie and some of the Clover gang hoodlums were hurt in an auto crash. And Amy, the car was stolen. Oh, no, no, she says. Yes, those hoodlums took Jackie into the gang after he refused to tell Judge Frommel they were the ones who had beaten that kid almost to death. He told us that before he passed out. And you encouraged him not to tell. You stood by while those delinquents poisoned his mind, made him one of them. The center wasn't good enough for him, but the filthy crowded streets was. He's not happy. Oh no, broken heart. Yes. Your indifference towards your community led to your indifference towards your own brother. I see you as you are, Amy, and it's turned my love to scorn. I pity you. Oh, wow, those are harsh words. Stan, Stan slammed shut the door, leaving me alone with the bitter realization that I had destroyed our love. Saw, Stan, come back. I love you, darling. Come back, sob. Come back. I cried until there were no tears left. Numbness settled over me, leaving me unfeeling and wooden. Days crept by while I hovered over Jackie's bed, praying for him to recover. You must get well. You must. You must, she says. How could I have been so blind? Why couldn't I see what my attitude of indifference was encourage, encouraging Jackie to do? I practically drove him into the streets. I had time to think during Jackie's convalescence. I was, it was during this period that the light of, of seasoning finally broke through and told me what had to be done. I'll make it up to you, Jackie. I'll go to Judge from, from and tell him it's my fault. If anyone's to be punished, it should be me.
Judge Fromm listened quietly as I emptied my heart. Then, all right, Miss Broder, I'll give you the opportunity to prove you realize your mistakes. I'll, I'll give both you and your brother another chance. You'll never regret it, Judge Fromm. I promise, she says. There was one more thing I wanted to do. I joined the D Driggs Street Youth Center as a counselor and threw myself feverishly into the work. Stan had been transferred to another center at his own request, so I knew we wouldn't meet. Oh, their heart is mending, right? That's cool. Just to s spur you on, girls, both the winning and the losing teams get sodas after the game. They're on the referee. Yay, that's nice. Then, one day, several weeks later, Stan, he walks through the door. Amy, they told me about you. I couldn't believe you were down here at the center, but here you are. That speaks for itself, he says. Stan, darling, Stan, I've so much to tell you, she says. You needn't say anything, sweet. You've shown me that you've changed. It's the three of us from now on, darling. You, me, and Jackie. Right. That's cool. The girls smiling in the back. Right. Happy endings. Happy endings. That's cool. And we read through this already, right? Very cool. Very cool. That was a nice read. And a Gene Kelly interview. I can't believe they didn't put the Gene Kelly interview on the cover that we read, right? Fantastic, fantastic. What a great read. I hope you enjoyed it. And Nicholas, thank you. Thank you. I hope you like these reads. And we got one more coming, a war comic that we're going to read from the same comic book haul that we got, right? Fantastic, fantastic. What a nice comic. What a nice comic. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.